What is going on you guys? Welcome to the first of six new EDH deck techs uh, done by my own personal design and today is Admiral Beckett Brass. She costs one blue black red for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature human pirate. Other pirates you control get plus one plus one and at the beginning of your end step gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So this deck will be all about uh, getting large amounts of pirates onto the battlefield and swinging with them as often as possible. Let's get right to it. So what I've got here to start is all of the pirates in the deck. I don't know if you can see how sizable the stack is of just pirates, but I'm going to go through them and uh, see how it goes. So first up, we've got Shipwreck Looter, one in a blue for a 2-1 pirate with raid. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So, looter, literally. Looting is the mechanic for it. Draw a card, discard a card. That kind of thing. Next card, Dead Eye Plunderers. Three, a blue and a black for a 3-3 three, three pirate. Gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. And you can pay two, a blue and a black, to create a colorless treasure artifact token that will, ta that will sacrifice to add any color mana to your mana pool. Fathom Fleet Captain, one and a black for a 2-1 with Menace. Uh, when it attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, you may pay two. If you do, create a 2-2 two -two black pirate creature token with Menace. If you have enough mana, you can just go crazy. Stormfleet Pyromancer, four and a red for a 3-2 human pirate wizard. Uh, raid, when Stormfleet Pyromancer enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, Stormfleet Pyromancer deals 2 damage to target creature or player, so it's a shock on a 5 mana stick. You got Rigging Runner, 1 red for a 1-1. One, one. First strike, when it, it enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, if you attack with the creature this turn. That's the entirety behind Raid. There's a lot of that in this deck because I felt it was ideal if you're going to be swinging a lot like this deck wants to. You have Lookout's Dispersal, 2 and a blue. Costs 1 less to cast if you control a pirate. Counter target spell unless its controller pays four. Nobody really wants to pay four, so that's why countervailing woods is so good in the right deck. That kind of thing. Marauding looter, two, a blue and a red for a four three pirate. At the beginning of your end step, if you attack the creature this turn, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. More looting. Looting is fun. Because pirates. Brazen Freebooter, three and a red for a three three. When it enters, create a treasure. Fairly simple. Dire Fleet Captain, a black and a red for a 2-2 Orc Pirate. When it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other attacking pirate. Note, it just says each other attacking pirate. This includes all the tokens you can make off of that other guy. That's pretty cool. Sailor of Means, two and a blue for a 1-4 Human Pirate. When it enters, create a treasure. That's like the uh, Brazen Freebooter, but cheaper. So that's nice. Desperate Castaways, one and a black for a 2-3, cannot attack unless you control an artifact. Uh, you'll see later on in the video that that's not a problem, because we always have artifacts. Well, most of the time. Wily Goblin, red red for a 1-1, one, one. when it enters, create a treasure. Lots of treasure, in case you didn't know, because we don't have smothering tides, so our creatures have to do our work for us. I've got Dire Fleet Interloper, three and a black for a 2-2, two, two. Menace, when it enters, explores. That's pretty cool. Captain Lannery Storm is two and a red for a legendary creature, human pirate, two two with haste. Whenever it attacks, create a treasure. Whenever you sacrifice a treasure, Captain Lannery Storm gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. So if you're going for that big finish, save those treasures because this is definitely one way to do it. Prosperous Pirates four and a blue for a three four. When it enters, create two colorless treasure tokens. <laughs> We love treasure, can you tell? Uh, Daring Saboteur, one and a blue for a 2-1 pirate. You can pay two and a blue, and it cannot be blocked this turn whenever it deals combat damage to a player. Loot, draw a card, discard a card. Got Grasping Scoundrel, which is just one black for a 1-1. One, one. Gets plus one, plus oh, as long as it's attacking. So it becomes a 2-1 on attack. Got Fiery Cannonade, two and a red for an instant. Deals two damage to each non-pirate creature run mostly all pirates. 
it's pretty good against a lot like token decks and such. It'll just wipe them out completely. It's pretty good. Dire Fleet Poisoner is the next one. One and a black for a 2-2. Flash and Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate can you control gains plus one, plus one, and Death Touch until end of turn. They'll never see it coming. Departed Deck Hand, one and a blue for a Spirit Pirate. It has a 2-2. Two, two. Becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it, and it can't be blocked except by spirits. And if you pay three and a blue, another target creature you control can't be blocked this turn except by spirits. And not a lot of people I know are running spirit decks in my playgroup. I don't think anybody is, at least at the moment. But we're all kind of changing everything up, so you never know. Uh, next up is Stormfleet Arsonist. Four and a red for a 4-4 four, four Orc Pirate. When it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent sacrifices a permanent. Go ahead, build another. I'll burn that down as well. Yeah, flavor text is a fun win in this deck. Next up is Stormfleet Aerialist. It is one and a blue for a 1-2 pirate with flying. It says, when it enters the battlefield, with a plus one, plus one counter, if you attack with a creature this turn. Dower Fleet Hoarder is one and a black for a 2-1. When it dies, create a treasure token. Treasure is a lot of fun, especially for pirates. They love it. I mean, have you seen the movies, read the books, you know, it's all there, it's all the same. Spectral Sailor is one blue for a 1-1 with Flash, another spirit pirate, and flying. You can pay three and a blue to draw a card. There's not even a downside to that. And the flavor text I feel I should read out considering it's said by Admiral Beckett Brass, who's the commander of the deck. Uh, any ship that sails on these mean seas for long is bound to pick up a ghost or two. That's, that's kind of fitting. <laughs> have Siren Lookout, which is two and a blue for a one, two, Siren Pirate with Flying. When it enters, explores. And the last one we've got is a interesting card called Kite Sail Freebooter. One and a black for a one, two, Human Pirate with Flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, exile that card until this leaves the battlefield. And when it does leave, it goes back in their hand, not to the graveyard or anything. So that's it for creatures. And next up, we're going to move on to depriving your opponent of resources. Because I happen to put a decent amount of that in this deck. Uh, a couple things in common, but... Now let's just see. First up, we've got Raider's Wake, which is three and a black for an enchantment that says whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. And at the beginning of your end step, if you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. All you have to do is attack. You don't even have to hit them. You just have to attack with something. So that guy who creates all those tokens, and you can just waste tokens on attack triggers, and they'll have nothing to play against you. I do like this card. Uh, Diabolic Edict, one and a black for an instant. Target player sacrifices a creature. Good for, like, Voltron decks. Because there's not targeted removal, so the Hexproof doesn't work. Or any of that. It just sacrifices a creature. So if they only have the one Voltron-y creature out, generally their commander, it just goes away. Problem solved. For two mana. I do like that. Uh, we've got Vicious Rumors, one black for a sorcery. It deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card, and each opponent mills one, and you gain one life. That's very nice. Mind Rot, two and a black for sorcery. Target player discards two cards. Heartless Pillage, two and a black for sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards, but it has raid. If you attack with a creature this turn, create a treasure. You have Thought Erasure, a blue and a black for sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from it. That player discards that card, and you can surveil one. The next card I've got is Skull Rend, three, a black and a red for a sorcery. Uh, Skull Rend deals two damage to each opponent. Those players each discard two cards at random. And if that wasn't enough depriving of resources from hand, I have Descent into Madness, which I tested out some time ago and it can get kind of insane. Uh, it is three black black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a despair counter on Descent to Madness. Then each player exiles X permanence he or she controls and or cards from his or her hand where X is the number of despair counters on Descent into Madness. Note this says each player, so that includes you, but at this point you should have enough stuff, even treasure tokens, really, <laughs> to suffice for this. If it gets up to like four, or anything really bigger than four, this card is just broken because they'll, they'll have nothing left. Unless it's like a token deck or anything like that. 
I, it, it, this gets crazy. My friends aren't a huge fan, but I love this card, so that's why I play it. Uh, next up, we're gonna go through equipment because pirates love scavenging for stuff and finding new gear. So I've got Mask of Memory, two mana for an equipment. Whenever equipped creatures deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. If you do, discard a card. Equip cost of one. I've got Scavenged Blade, one and a red for uh, equipment. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. So you don't even have to pay the equip cost. It just attaches, which is kind of nice. Uh, gets plus two, plus zero, oh, has an equip cost of three. Uh, you've got Dowsing Dagger, which is the best equipment in the deck. It is two mana. Enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two green plant creature tokens with Defender. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may transform Dowsing Dagger. It's got an equip cost of two. And if we transform it momentarily, there we are. It turns into Lost Veil, vale, which is essentially Gilded Lotus uh, on a land, so it's harder to deal with. Unless somebody's running, say, Armageddon or, I don't know, Tron? <laughs> I really don't know. The next up is, there we go, Pirate's Cutlass. Three mana for an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target pirate. All of our creatures are pirates. It goes for free. Equip creature gets plus two, plus one. Equip cost of two. And the last equipment in the deck is Malefic Scythe. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ma male, malefic? Ma malefic. Malefic. I don't know. Malefic Scythe. One and a black for an equipment. When it enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each soul counter on Malefic Scythe. Whenever equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on Malefic Scythe. So your creatures will get bigger and bigger and bigger every time another one dies and you go to re-equip. Next up, we've got artifacts, starting with Witching Well. When it's just one blue, when it enters Scry 2, you can pay four, sacrifice it, draw two cards. We've got Rakdos Locket, which is fairly simple. Uh, three mana, artifact. Tap, add a red or black. You can add four, tap it, sacrifice it, draw two cards. Manolith, three mana taps for one. Talisman of Creativity, two mana. You can tap to add a colorless or add a red or blue and take a damage. You have Skyclave Relic, three mana. Kicker for three, it's indestructible. When it enters, if it was kicked, create two tapped copies of it. So six mana, you get three of these tapped to add for one of any color. And they're indestructible, which is nice. And you've got Sentinel Totem, which is one mana, when it enters, scry one, you tap it, exile it, exile all cards from all graveyards. Graveyard hate is wonderful. Yeah, I said it. I don't like graveyard decks. That's why I literally don't own one. So, <laughs> I mean, I had Hogak at one point, but I grew tired of it because I didn't know how to play it, so. And then the last category for today is going to be an alternate win condition. Uh, of Ominous Seas, which is one blue for an enchantment whenever you draw a card. Put a four shadow counter on Ominous Seas, remove eight counters, create an eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. I figured this was fitting because, you know, release the Kraken and they're all pirates, so I thought it was funny and it actually kind of works because you're drawing cards all game, obviously. So if you have that, you have Swarm Intelligence out, which is six and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you may copy it, you can choose new targets. Uh, if you have that out with this, and then you're casting cards like Tormenting Voice, one in a red, discard a card, draw two cards. There's two count four counters because you're copying it. Chemist's Insight, draw two cards. Draw four cards uh, because you're copying it, three in a blue. Also has Jump Start, so you could do it even more. You got Thrill of Possibility, discard a card, draw two cards. Draw four cards, four more counters. I mean, it goes insane. You've got Cathartic Reunion. Discard two cards, draw three cards. That's six counters. That's almost immediately onto a Kraken. Yeah, I, I like this alternate win condition. I have yet to win with it, though, so it's not exactly a win condition if you haven't won with it. Um, it's potential for a win condition. I'll give it that much. So I'll give you a brief overview of the mana base. It is fairly simple. You've got Evolving Wilds, Temple of Malice, Grixis Panorama, some Life Gain Lands like Akum Refuge, Bloodfell Caves, Dismal Backwater. You've got a couple of Taplands, Highland Lake. You've got the three Guild Gates that fit in here. Demir, Is it Rakdos, Swift Water Cliffs for more life gain. And you've got Islands, obviously. You've got Mountains, and you have Swamps. Let's see if we can see all that. There we go. It is a 
fairly simple uh, in-depth deck tech for Admiral Beckett Brass with Pirate Tribal, the first of six in my new collection. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I uh, hope next year goes really well and we can get some content rolling. I'll see you guys in the next one.